People always say you need thick skin. Mm -hmm. Even in R Charlotte, North Carolina, Rock Hill, whatever, you need thick skin because it's pretty competitive. And I will say I don't have the thickest skin. <laughs> so I roll with the punches, you know? It, it just, it happens and then you just bounce back. If you don't get the roll, there'll be another one. It's okay. That's a great outlook to have. Yeah, uh -huh. you, you have to or you will drive yourself crazy. You can't, you can't beat yourself up for not getting something. You can't try to figure it out. You know, have your moment where you're like, ugh, I'm bummed about that. And then move on because there's something else out there for you. And a, another friend once told me um, when I was booking stuff and then I had a moment where I didn't book something, he said to me, do you realize all those other things that you got cast in there was someone else or several other people that were bummed because they didn't get cast. So there's there's always there's always someone that's going to be disappointed, and you'll have your time where you're excited about the project you've been cast in, and then there'll be times when you're just really bummed, and it's okay. It's part of the business, and you bounce back. Some other projects that I just worked on, I worked on um, a pilot called Distraction, and I'm excited about that. Um, because the story is really, really cool, and the director is really ambitious. Jeff, Jeff Prince is taking, um, he's already taking some of the, the um, episodes and some, I, I, hopefully some of the pilot and maybe some of us actors to California to pitch it. So that's pretty exciting. And, um, and a couple years back I worked on the feature film Ghost, and I'm hoping that we will have a premiere soon. When you're actually filming everything, do you have favorite moments or favorite parts of being on set, just the actual process? Oh yeah, anything? absolutely. I think, I, I, I would hope most actors would agree with me, it is when you are, it's when you're in your role. It's when you are, um, uh, some people call it in the moment, but it's, it's when you get to play. It's when you're in the scene and um, and I'm with another really good actor, that's my favorite thing. If I'm with another really good actor and we're connecting and he or she is um, you know, responding to me and giving me back, um, that is my favorite part. It's a, it's a rush, it's exciting, and you, you, um, sometimes it's cathartic. That is why we act. It's, that, it's, that, um, it's, bringing, um, it's bringing the story to life and truthfully. That's real important. That's my, when I feel like I'm in a scene, it's usually a scene, sometimes there's a monologue, and I feel like I have uh, um, had that moment with the other actor, and like I said, we brought the truth of the story out to, to share with everyone else. That's incredible, I love that. And then I also, I just love the people. I love, uh, you, you have to love the people because you have long hours. <laughs> I do not love the long hours, but I love the bonding that I have with all the, with the crew and the cast. That's awesome. In your film career or just in general, you know, have you ever been taken to other countries or? Oh, uh, well, I. Traveling in the past? I heard, uh, so I think Dan was looking at my Facebook, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, I'm really fortunate that um, 
I, I and I don't know how we squeeze all this in you know filming and then we we do take a trip and then the kids um, my husband and I take a couple of trips a year and it's through his business mm -hmm. and so yeah I have um, I've traveled all over the world and I actually met my husband through travel I don't know if you knew that Dan I don't know if you knew that I um um, work, my husband and I worked for a corporate travel company. That was one of the times I was on a hiatus because I actually had a job that would not allow me to do any acting. We were traveling all the time. And there were, oh gosh, how many of us? About 120 of us between the ages of 20 and 30. So it was a blast. We traveled all over the world. And when um, my husband and I got married, uh, we just knew we we had to continue that you you know I guess it's like acting you get travel in your blood and you just don't want to stop I didn't want to stop acting I never wanted to give up on acting and uh, I love travel I have not had any acting opportunities abroad except right after college I did um, backpack around uh, Europe and um, a little bit through um, Oh gosh, I went to Israel and while I was um, living abroad, I lived in London and I did do some acting over there, mostly taking classes because it was so expensive and I bet actors run into this all the time. It was so expensive, I, I just could barely afford to do anything except work and eat mm -hmm. <laughs> and take classes. So that was a that was a fun experience. Recently, we went to Provence, France, and and visited some wineries there. Um, my husband and I love wine, and we especially love tasting the wines at the different vineyards. We've been to Napa and Sonoma in California several times, and we've been to um, Argentina and Chile and France and Spain and I think that's it for now we want to go to the wineries in oh we, went, oh we were in South Africa I was in South Africa last summer that was that's probably my most I'll wait for that car to go by that South Africa was probably our most amazing trip and we visited the vineyards there and they were fantastic they actually were very similar to the uh, the, the wines were very similar to the California wines, whereas the Argentina wines were a lot heavier. And we hope to go to New Zealand and taste the wines there. Wow. When is New Zealand coming up? Or is uh, it planned yet we, at all? we do not have New Zealand planned yet. No. Um, we're taking the kids on a trip to Mexico. Mm. And then um, we are going to... Russia and Copenhagen next summer, but it's all through my husband's work. So I don't want people to, you know, I'm for, we're fortunate we've been able to, to, to take these trips. This is going back a couple years. Uh, I, I I filmed a wine tasting show, a couple uh, maybe three years ago. Loved that. We drank wine and tasted wine, and we had a oh um, we had a um, a wine sommelier. Sommelier? Oh, I know I'm saying that wrong. Sommelier? A wine sommelier? Um, Joe. And then we had a, um, a food a food and wine expert, Lee. And, uh, and then we always had a guest. Um, a guest from a, a vineyard or um, a, a guest from a local restaurant. And it, it was it was always interesting because we typically drank too much, and the show ran way over what we had planned because we had a script and we never kept to the script. It was a lot of what we're doing right now, so it always ran over. Well, what was kind of funny, but not so funny probably for the producer, was at least one or two shows they discovered that they hadn't didn't have tape or didn't film. <laughs> And so we had to redo the shows, oh. but we didn't mind because it just meant more wine. Go. How did you wind up being a stand-in for Danny DeVito? Many years ago, I was uh, an extra in Renaissance Man with Penny Marshall. I don't think I'm even credited on the um, for being in the film. 
I was just an extra, a kid, and they suddenly needed a stand-in for Danny DeVito. And I was close to, closest in height. I don't know what happened to the regular um, stand-in because I literally was like an army girl. And, and he, he was kind of, he was really kind of, you know, chatting with me and he said, she'll do. Now, in working with maybe even some directors that you've worked with before or new ones, do you yeah. find that uh, as far as the script goes that you've felt enough that you can actually go to him and say, hey, maybe this would work instead or do you tend to kind of go with what the script says? That is a great question and it, it, I do want to respect the director and the writer so I would make sure that that's um, okay with the director and when I was uh, you know f first getting right back into film I did not feel um, comfortable or I just w d didn't want to offend the director so I wouldn't ask that but I think that's pretty common nowadays for an actor to say to the director I'd feel more comfortable saying these lines this way is that okay with you and then I had so much fun on Find A Way because Burgess would say to us, um, you know, I, w I want a master that's pretty close to the script. And then he'd say, do whatever you want. And we would improv it. Uh, and then, you know, and then we got really fun. Like I told you, he'd, he'd take one of us aside and say, hey, try this. Think about this. And then we bring it back. So um, it all depends on the director, what they're comfortable with. Most directors I find want you to be honest with the material and if you feel like something's just not coming out right, it doesn't feel comfortable, then they'll allow you to change it. But in some films, the dialogue is really specific. Maybe it's a comedy or maybe um, I just worked on Nowhere and, um, and uh, Ryan Thomas is uh, he has some throwback lines that that are like references to other films he's done. So those are real important lines for him. You can't cut those out. So um, I want to, res so, so like I said, again, it's whatever the director's comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Having said that, Ryan also encouraged us to do a lot of improv. I love improv into a scene and sometimes a director will take what you've improv and they'll use it. So um, I always tell, yeah, I, I don't tell an actor this, I always tell myself, just communicate with the director and if you're really lucky, they'll, they'll trust you and that if something's better for you. When I go to an audition, however, I don't do as much, <laughs> I right. don't do much, too, too much improv -ing. If I drop a line or if I paraphrase it, I think that's okay but I wouldn't go off completely, go completely off the script. Okay. Do you ever still experience stage fright or anything like that, even though you've been doing Nerves, it you know when I get nerves most of the time, it's um, with auditions. Mm -hmm. uh, once I get the role, I get excited and I might have um, some adr adrenaline, um, but I have to say, nerves can hinder me. So I really don't want to be too nervous. I will not drink coffee <laughs> the day of an audition or the day of filming because that will trigger the nerves or just exacerbate whatever nervousness I might have. I think it's just time in the business. And, and I, they never go away because I've been in the business for a while and you still get nervous. And that's, that's not a bad thing. Some people use that, those nerves. You should always use whatever you're feeling in the moment in the scene, in the audition. You should go with it because you can't fight it. Um, but having said that, I always try to be as calm as possible when I do go to an audition. And the more you audition, the less nervous you're gonna be because you'll just get comfortable. Okay, I'm doing another audition. You also won't put as much weight on the outcome of the audition if you just keep auditioning. Mm -hmm. But. Um, um, I have also found that kava tea, if I feel like I'm really going to be nervous about, about uh, a, um, a role I'm doing or an audition, I will drink kava tea to relax me. And um, 
some breathing exercises, some vocal exercises before I go. Um, just having a little bit of quiet time by myself before I go. And then if I'm on set and I have a, a emotional scene, I'm gonna probably be a little anxious about that. I will separate myself from other cast members because I'll, I'll need to, I'll need to, I hate to use the phrase go to that place, but I probably will have to go to that place if it's that kind of scene and being um, laughing and talking with my um, fellow castmates might, might make me more nervous going into the scene. Mm -hmm. So if I think I'm going to be nervous about something, I'll just be by myself. Just kind of take my alone time and think about uh, what's happened before this scene I'm about to do. Think about what I want. Think about, um, you know, think about what I'm feeling. Just kind of get in touch with myself. So can you cry on cue if it's <laughs> necessary? Uh, uh, not always. Um, I can cry and just like I was telling you earlier every situation will require a little bit different preparation for me depending on the subject matter it may be really easy for me um, but I always I always want to be honest I never want to force a cry if it's not there it's not there so it has to it has to come from what's going on inside me and if I'm moved to tears, then I'm moved to tears. Now, that being said, um, the, the material itself a lot of times is moving to me. And if, if I am just, like I said, just really honest and let it just kind of um, pour over me what's going on in the scene, then that emotion will come out. And I'm sometimes really surprised. I recently, I'm glad you asked me that, I recently, um, because sometimes it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And you kick yourself, you're thinking, I needed to cry for that. If a director really wants it, we'll get there. But if I go to an audition and I need to cry, I can't guarantee it's going to happen. That's usually when it's probably because you're, you're nervous and you're not as relaxed. Um, but I did, um, I, I'm in a, um, a, a docudrama called um, I'm Sorry, and I have a small part in it, but it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty important part. I'm the mother of a teenager who was texting and driving and, and killed some of her friends when she was in a car accident. And I told the dir director, Tim Vogel, I said, Tim, um, he said, do you want to rehearse this? I said, no, 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 no. If it requires some some really heavy emotion. I don't think rehearsing it is a good idea. We just need to go for it. Mm -hmm. And that's usually a, how it is with a, a crying thing. Once you get the big cry, you're not gonna. You're probably not gonna get it again and again and again. So it's it's best to work up to it if you need to with a director. But anyway, um, I said to Tim Vogel, let's just see what happens. I don't know what's gonna happen. And we got into the scene, and it's an interview. And just the questions, like I said, letting them just kind of wash over me, hit me so hard that it just, you know, it just happened. It, 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 it was an, it was honest emotions, you know. But I didn't know that was going to happen. I, in a, in any given scene, I never know what's going to happen. And that's also exciting, is working with different actors, and whatever. I however they I respond to them sometimes it might be crying from what they're giving me or sometimes it it might be anger and I had the fun experience of working with um, when I worked with Burgess Jenkins on find a way I would do one scene when well, we did several scenes but Burgess would whisper in my ear something and it would change the scene and he'd go whisper something in the other actors ear so Within one scene, I don't know what they've chosen for the movie, but within one scene, um, you know, I can think of with my husband in the movie, um, there, there's a, one take of it 
where I'm angry. Another take of it where I'm um, uh, almost sympathetic. And then there's another take where I'm actually tearing up. So um, that's to Burgess's credit, but that's that's why I say you you I, I don't, I might do a preparation before I come to a scene, but I don't plan out what I'm gonna do. I let the moment happen. And that goes along with crying. If it calls for crying, that's so specific, but you know, if the emotion's there, if it's an honest emotion, whether it's anger or um, unhappiness or distraught, it's going to come out, and it comes out in all different ways. <laughs> How does anyone feel when their daughter's life has been disrupted, turned upside down, and at the same time, two children are gone because of my child, because of the mistakes that my child made. I can't put into words the grief, the sorrow I feel, and the sympathy I feel for those other families as well. The conditions are not always ideal on your film sets. You know, you're, it's either too hot or too cold. So, uh, you know, the summer I shot the film Debris, and I think the I think maybe even the cameras were fogging up because it was so incredibly hot outside. But then in January, I shot with your friends from Straw House Pictures, um, Midnight S Snack, and we were in a garage and it was so cold. Dur and it was really weird because during the day we were having almost like an Indian summer. It was January and the days were fine, but it was, it was just way too cold to be like in a skirt and a short um, blouse. Um, my nose was turning red, and at the very final scene, um, I couldn't feel my fingers, I couldn't feel my toes. I think it started freezing rain, and we were finished. <laughs>